Hey guys, I finished Final Fantasy XIII, and it's time for me to do my full review. I'm going to go through this as simplistic as I can to really express what I felt was a different and more evolved experience for the Final Fantasy series. The story of Final Fantasy XIII takes place mostly in this technologically advanced uh, city civilization known as Cocoon. And basically it follows the adventures of six individuals who through supreme beings known as False Sea have branded them to be their servants, also known as Lussi. So you're, you take the control of six Lussi uh, and that's a term that gets thrown around a lot in the game as well as other terms like Focus, uh, Psycom, Sanctum, etc, etc, etc. And basically, you control these six people who have been branded to fulfill a task, which is to destroy Cocoon, their homeland, their home world. And they're not going to do it. This is all, this game, this story is all about the interactions and the struggles each character has to overcome, as well as, in the broader sense, overcoming the destiny that have been unjustly forced upon them to try and save everyone, save themselves, and fight back against these tyrants that control their lives. And in that sense, it's very reminiscent of Final Fantasy X, and I like that. And there's something else that's so... This game does something that I have never felt or understood, or, or rather, I've never gotten this impression from a Final Fantasy game before, and here's what I'm trying to, and here's what I'm talking about. For the first 25 hours, roughly, for the first 8 or 9 chapters, you have no control who's in your party, none whatsoever. The game decides who you have in your party, who you have to use, and then it takes it from there. And since the game's all about progressing the story, you get to see these interactions between these characters and how they have to and the struggles they have to go through and at the same time you get a good understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of each character how they operate together not only in the story uh, plot purpose but in gameplay and the battle mechanics and it really creates this this deeper distinct definition of all the characters not only separate but as a whole and how they work together that I've never experienced something like that in a Final Fantasy game before. And I gotta say, the ending was moving. Not, you know, emotional, but it was it was powerful, and I, and I liked it. It's a little bit ambiguous, but it seems to have worked out, so it's, it's a very good story. It's not the best, but by no means is it mediocre. Now let's talk about the gameplay. They sacrificed a lot for this game. They got rid of the world map, towns, NPCs, shops, mini games, side quests, what seems to be the staples for a Final Fantasy game. They got rid of them all for the sake of the story and the battle mechanics. Now, before you start getting, you know, your panties in a twist, don't worry about it. Don't freak out. Even though it appears that all those things have been eliminated, they haven't. Okay? Let me explain. The game is all about progressing the story. And for the most part, most areas are pretty cut and dry. You start here, here's your destination, find your way there, you'll get to a cutscene, and then you'll go to a new area and start all over. That creates good pacing. It's not, oh my god, there's so many battles, and oh my god, why is there so many cutscenes? It's a nice balance between back and forth, between the cutscenes and the, the areas to explore, which all in all are breathtakingly gorgeous. And that's another thing that Square Enix is definitely good and known for. Um, but back to the point. There are towns, but they've become more of environmental set pieces more than anything else. NPCs are more or less people who will talk to you without you actually having to talk to them kind of in passing, so it's pointless. Shops are done at every save point, which have been generously spread throughout the game. It's sort of like an online shop at each save point, so it's 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 useful and it's, it's different, but it seems to be the way things are going. Um, 
the world map becomes this little mini map, which is similar to Final Fantasy X, and um, if I remember correctly, also Final Fantasy XII. It kind of seems the way that the series is going. Um, with no towns, there's no ends because the game heals you after each battle, which is all again all about progressing the story. They want you to keep moving, and you know that's good. Um, no side quests other than Mark hunts, which are quite similar to Twelve's hunts, and it's to me, it's it's tacked on. And it feels thin and it feels very lacking. Many games, they really, and, and this is one of my complaints. There's um, spoilers. There's a town known as Nautilus, which reminds me kind of like the Gold Saucer from Seven mixed with Trino from Nine, and it really feels like it's, it's supposed to be this big carnival type of place, but there's no mini games. There's really no mini games to explore there, and, and it's it feels like they could have done something with that. Um, there are mini games, but they're they're few and far between, and for the most part, they don't even feel like mini games. So take that as you will. Um, but anyways, back to the gameplay. Um, battles are active time. Uh, it's a little bit different. They've eliminated MP as now it takes, you just have to fill a little ATB gauge, and it's in sections, so every time you fill up a section, you can use an ability right off the bat, as soon as you want to. And that provides quick, the quick execution of attacks, even when you don't have to wait for the whole thing. It's all about time. You have enough time, you fill enough gauge, you can use an attack. Or you can wait for the whole gauge, you know, to fill and you can do something really good. Or a lot of stuff all at once. And it's just, it's however you want to play. And this all falls back into the whole, they want you to continue the story. They don't, they don't want to bog you down with having to heal or grind or anything like that. So, you get to this point where you might encounter a game over. You know, you encounter that if your party leader, which is the only person you control, dies game over. Not an issue. You hit retry, it puts you right back out the battle you lost, you can try again with different strategies, which brings us to the next thing. The game's all about experimentation. It wants you to experiment, which is why it gives you the paradigm system. It allows you to use roles for each character, and there's six of them, pretty simple, like fighter, monk, black mage, white mage, etc. And for the most part, each character can only use three of those, which tailors and, you know, works for their strengths and weaknesses, but you can kind of mix and match who does what with a paradigm. So you have a paradigm with, like, an attacker, a magic user, and a healer, but then you get into a situation where you really need to heal and you need to heal fast. You can switch to another one of your paradigms that you have set up to where everyone can heal you. So then it's just like that. Whenever you want in battle, you can switch through paradigms, which creates a deeper dynamic kind of battle system, and it really makes the battles flow. And especially when you get into enemies, or even bosses, that just massively outrank your character's HP, like in the hundreds of thousands to even millions, those executions and switches between the paradigms become crucial to winning fights, and it's very unique. Um, They've taken away the level system, at least for the characters. You can level up weapons and accessories, and it kind of increases the bonuses that they give to you. But the way you progress your characters is through the roles, which are also progressed through something known as the Crystarium, which is a form of the Sphere Grid from 10, only it's tailored more specifically to each character and each of their roles. Um, not everyone can use the same abilities, not everyone is good at certain things, and that's what makes the game dynamic and makes it really fun to play. And it's addictive. The gameplay is fun. And that really makes it a good Final Fantasy. Um, graphics are stunning. Uh, the sound is forgettable, but it fits the mood. And the voice acting is really what puts it over the top. It really makes you feel connected to the characters and how they interact with one another, even when it seems kind of cheesy. Uh, as for the miscellaneous stuff they have to offer, not a whole lot. I mean, this is a 50 to 60 hour game. No no joke. And other than the hunts, there's really not a whole lot you can do other than, you know, upgrade stuff. So, um, overall, I was pleasantly surprised by this title. I wasn't expecting to like it. I did like it. 
it's in my top five specifically. It's my fifth favorite Final Fantasy, and it deserves a 9 out of 10.